So the well-known gossip shit rag, Hello Magazine, well known for fawning over celebrities and pointless, shitty, trivial articles about celebrities for years and years, has an article today on, on its online format. I'm not sure about the physical printed copy because I'm proud to say I've never so much as opened a copy of Hello Magazine, and I do not intend to. But um, this article is all about Kate Middleton and how she is broody, to use their phrase, and wants a fourth child, and it's obviously it's all, all about rumours and no, no, no actual substantial statement or proof of that, but it's obviously just just gossip. But I just just wanted to make this video today to ask a very very simple question: How many women in the UK do you think would love to have second, third, maybe a fourth child, but simply could not afford it? Simply would not be able to come up with the finances. To support another child. We've already had 10 years of women going to food banks. Kids going to school hungry. Kids going to school with their shoes falling apart. Second hand uniforms. All that kind of stuff. 10 years plus even. Because this stuff was happening long before the Tories came to power. But they simply could not afford it. They simply wouldn't be able to afford another child. And I'm sure many of these women would adore the chance to raise another little brother or sister for their kids. But they wouldn't be able to afford it. So they don't. So they hold off. So they use contraception or they just whatever. Now of course I wouldn't be standing here. Sitting here. Making this video. If the royal family just relied solely on their private revenue. Because private revenue of the royal family. Is more than enough to sustain them. More than enough to support the Queen, Prince Philip, all the kids, all the grandkids, more than enough. They are worth absolutely millions in private revenue and private lands. But of course, they have to go and rely on the taxpayer for certain things as well. Private jets to fly them around the world, wedding dresses, wedding cakes, security, all this kind of stuff. It's all the strain on the public sector and all the strain on the public purse. So who do you think is going to be paying for this fourth child that Kate Middleton Maybe or maybe maybe not actually wants any fourth child because these magazines that perpetuate this sort of nonsense about how great it is that the royals are having another baby, there's going to be another royal baby, another royal wedding, blah blah blah. They never actually ask who's actually paying for all of this. People like me, people like you, who go to work and pay taxes, and it's paying for these people's luxury, or paying for a large part of these people's luxury. The royal family have millions. So why don't they get G4S to do their fucking security at their weddings? Why don't they pay for their own kids? State The state benefit system under the Tories, they rolled, rolled out a whole new a new rule that says once you have two kids, you cannot receive benefits for a third or over. So you, you can only get benefits for two children in this country now. Now, that's got pros and cons, obviously. There are ups and downs to that. But do the royal family... Would they be an exception to this rule? Somehow, I doubt it. Somehow, I'm willing to bet that fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the twentieth kid that Kate Middleton and William have would be supported by a taxpayer in the life of luxury. Private jets, private schooling would probably be paid for by, by the taxpayer as well. All the luxury, all the security. It's all paid for by us. And of course, the actual stats that the royal family pump out and the actual stats that people give us when they're pro-royal, pro-monarchy. Never include the costs of security, the costs of all the taxpayer funding things that we actually, because they always just use the the cost of uh, what what brings in, what, what actually comes, what, what actually comes in, things like uh, tourism, which, which is a whole load of nonsense anyway. No tourist comes to, to London to shake the Queen's hand. They come to London to see the buildings, which are an independent entity. The Crown Estates do not belong to the Crown or the government. They're a, they're a private body. They come to see the, 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 to learn about the history, to see the paintings of Henry VIII, and see the, see the buildings, the Tower of London and Buckingham Palace. None of that is the responsibility of the Queen. That's like saying George Foreman combats world hunger because he, he has his tacky name on some grills. It's nonsense. So as ever, we're going to be paying for a fourth child while our own children working class children in this country go to school hungry while their mothers go to food banks while their fathers graft 50 hours a week just to put food on the table and sometimes even fail to do it after that 
while their parents are treated like shit at, at, at their jobs, you know, while opportunities and help for poor people, for poor kids, are shrinking into the distance. By 2020, they believe that 20% of children in the UK will live in absolute poverty. Absolute poverty means nothing. Absolute nothing. You can't. We wouldn't be able to afford the basics that you need to live a quality life. So toothpaste, things like that, shower gel, shampoos, food, clothing, cosmetic, uh, like a uh, hygiene, hygiene material, soap, etc. Absolute poverty. That's next year. 2020. Next year. Sometimes it doesn't seem like 2020. It seems like a big number. It's next year, and they reckon that by that time. 20% of children in the UK will live in absolute poverty. Meanwhile, Kate Middleton will be able to get another child funded by us, by the taxpayer. When is this inequality going to stop? Now, a lot of people who support the royals say they support the royals because it's traditional, it's it's a part of British culture, it's a part of our, our heritage, part of our identity. And I get that, to some degree. I do understand why people love the, the circumstance and the tradition and the culture. Don't I don't agree with it, but I understand it. But traditions are called traditions for a reason. Because they're old. They're outdated. Traditions change. What about we how about when we, we make a new tradition? A tradition where the royal family fucking supports themselves. Where they rely on their private land and there is a lot of it. Where they rely on that. They pay for their own private jets around the world. They pay for their own security. And of course, you will, people will, will argue the the political side of it. Oh, well, the Queen's an important figure in our politics. Well, how about we revoke her head of state role and we elect a head of state? So when we go to the polls, we elect a party which has a leader and that party leader will then become prime minister. So if we elect Tories again, God forbid... Theresa May or whoever's in charge of the Tories by then will become Prime Minister. If we elect Labour, Jeremy Corbyn or whoever's in charge of Labour will become Prime Minister. And then also we have another vote where we elect a head of state, which will be somebody who doesn't belong to any political party. It could be an independent person. And we elect from a list of names and we elect a head of state who will do the things that the Queen does, stamp off on, on legislation, etc. On our behalf and every say every five years, every four years, whatever a term may be for these people, we would elect a new one or elect to keep the one we currently have. And that way we have a head of state that is accountable. And I do not see what's wrong with that idea. And obviously it's not, I haven't fleshed this idea out, I haven't written a fucking thesis on it, but it's just an idea. How about we do that rather than have a family that for generations gets the right to legislate, gets the right to stamp or dissent certain legislation based purely off who mummy and daddy are you know tomorrow if if a bill comes to the queen and she said no it would trigger a constitutional crisis now in practice our current queen hasn't done that but who's to say when she dies that prince charles won't become a power mad dictator and just say no 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 and refuse every bill that comes before him never mind the fact that it's gone through both houses of parliament back and forth and it's had amendments made to it etc who's to say he can't do that the Queen still has power to declare war. Who's to say when the, our current Queen dies? Because I actually believe our current Queen is quite good in that respect. She seems to know her, her role and know that Parliament and government is sovereign more than her. But who's to say when she goes, Charles won't just go, oh, we're going to war with France. And that's it. We trigger a constitutional crisis, a constitutional meltdown. So well, I say we elect a head of state. We take away those powers to declare war and do what the fuck they like and dissolve government as they wish. And we make them purely a body that goes around representing us when and where the government can't across the world. And a body that is there at the final step for legislation to put a final stamp on it and pass it into law. That's what I think we should do. We should stop financing these people's lifestyles. We should come down as well just to be just to be even and cover the playing field, we should come down on MPs' expenses as well and bankers' bonuses and things like that. Nobody should be entitled to a life of luxury on the taxpayer's tab, particularly if you are already rolling in it. 
Nobody. Three times under the line, four exclamation marks. Nobody. So, for people who support the monarchy, for people who believe in the monarchy, that's on you. Really, it really is. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you all day and hate you because I haven't got the energy. But, there comes a point where a line must be drawn. You have to stop ignoring all the benefits and all the luxuries that this family has based on what? Name me one merit, one single merit that the Queen has, that Prince Charles has, Prince Harry, Prince William, Kate Middleton, Meghan Markle, that any of these people have that warrants the level of taxpayer support, not even support, taxpayer benefit that they get, taxpayer grant that they get. Because there is nothing, and I repeat, nothing that the Queen does that n nobody else could do. That an elected body could not do. So that's it. I'll see you next time.